Okay, I'm gonna read you guys what you missed that wasn't censored by the game's adult fit filter for its reasons. Excuse me, I have poor handwriting, so just let me get this. In her monologue, her lips are open just a little. She lets out a sharp breath as, without thinking, I breathlessly lean forward and press my lips to hers. The kiss only lasts for a fleeting moment before our faces part, our breathing quick and our and nervous. The feeling of Anako's mouth lingers and her eyes remain locked to mine. Trembling a little myself, I remove my tie and begin undoing the buttons of my shirt. Hanaka remains staring where, standing where she was, looking at the ground in front of her rather than watching me undress. On the other hand, I'm thankful for that. I've always been somewhat self-conscious of my body, but my scarring has made that quite a lot worse on the other, though the atmosphere feels very strange. My shirt falls to the floor in a heap, as untidy and crumpled as Hanako's blouse and skirt. Hanako's entire body visibly flinches at the sound of the zipper to my trousers being pulled down. My trousers join my shirt on Hanako's floor next to the bed as I do my socks in short measure. I hesitate before taking off my boxers and end up leaving them on. They represent one last hurdle. I don't think I can overcome quite yet. Sheer embarrassment stops me, along with my wanting Hanako, not wanting Hanako getting even more worked up. My unease about the situation has also left me needing my own stimulation. Hanako. She gives a nod without so much as glancing at me, and makes her way to the bed as I do. She walks as if her legs were wooden sticks. I'd find it amusing if I weren't doing the same exact thing. I take the initiative. Turning around and sitting on the side of the bed, I look to her face to invite her to take a seat next to me or in front of me, but end up awkwardly looking down to stop myself from staring at her body. I shouldn't crumple this again, but it's too late. And then after a couple seconds, it ends. The sound of Hanako's breathing in my own rings in my ears, almost painfully loudly. Hanako holds an arm over her face, her mouth open and gulping for air. As I hold myself over her, suddenly my arms almost give way to my vision and my vision distorts, as if someone grabbed it and pulled sideways. I let myself fall sideways onto the bed, beside the panting Hanako for fear of falling onto her instead. We both lie beside each other, naked and pressed against one another in order to fit on a bed made for a single person. My eyes try to focus on the ceiling, to not much success. Pulling a blanket over us to stave off the colds is all I can do. The only sound in the room is that of our breathing. The sweat that had accumulated on my body feels uncomfortable. We're both physically and emotionally exhausted, and a complete mess all over. My vision slowly begins to return to normal as I continue to stare at the ceiling, but my limbs still feel like jelly. I try to concentrate on my chest and find its beat irregular and mildly painful. This is a dangerous time. I have to think this through and not panic, lest I make my situation any worse. With a huge effort, I take control of my erratic breathing forcing myself to take long, deep breaths. I count half a dozen before I start to feel physically calm again and press my hand to my chest to assure myself. My heart beats back to normal. I'm okay. I turn my face towards Anaku, who's already looking at me. Her expression looks pretty dazed, but underneath that, there's definitely a look of concern. She's realized what happened. I'm okay. Everything's back to normal. I find myself barely able to get the words out between breaths. I don't think sex would tire a normal body out so much, so I have no doubt my condition's at least partially at fault. Why did my body have to do this right now? All my thoughts race, though are pushed aside as I see the wide smile forming on Hanako's face. As always, I smile back without another thought. Hanako's smile has always been infectious, and it's almost childlike sweetness and earnesty. Something that sets her apart from anyone else I know. Right now, we don't need words. Everything we want to communicate to each other, we can share just fine without them. Hmm. My eyes feel heavy as they slowly open. The light from outside making me blink a bit to let them get adjusted. My body feels like lead and my head feels just as heavy. Waking up in an unfamiliar ceiling is an uncomfortable feeling, 
It reminds me of the first time I awoke to the dimpled white tile ceiling of the hospital. It's only after spending a few seconds staring up at it that I realize where I am. This is Hanako's dormitory room. I feel as though my heart stopped again. As the events of last night rush through my head, blood rushes to my cheeks and I shut my eyes once more. There's very little point to getting myself worked up this early though, so I try to push such things out of my mind for now. I roll my head to the side to see if Hanako's where she was when I drifted off to sleep. All that's there now is an empty space on the bed and the room beyond. I sluggishly sit up and rub my eyes, before pinching the bridge of my nose and looking around the room. The only person here is me. I'm still bereft of my clothes, and after a quick scan of the floor for them, I notice that they're neatly folded in the corner of the room. Try as I might, I can't see Hanako anywhere. The foil packet for the condom's been removed too, presumably put into the bin. With a great yawn, I get myself out of bed and quickly look for some underwear. I grimace a little at the prospect of putting my boxers back on after yesterday's efforts did a job on them, but I don't have much choice. Taking advantage of the fact that I have some time without anyone around, I get myself dressed from the coming school day, in short order. And then, I'm alone. Without saying anything more to busy myself with, my mind becomes focused on the fact that I'm standing in another person's bedroom after we spent the night together, but there's not a single sign of her around. My gut proves to be more helpful than my brain at working out this riddle. With a loud growl, it reminds me that, it reminds me that she may just be getting breakfast. I would have liked to wake up next to her, but maybe it's a good thing that I have a few moments alone. Hanako's room, as always, is quite bleak in appearance. There are precious few decorations and practically no personal artifacts that aren't hidden away in cupboards and drawers. She's lived here for three years, but the room looks as if it's barely been occupied for a single day. I shouldn't overthink this. She might just like living this way, as some do. Having the ability to put such low stock in physical possessions does have its advantages, but even so it feels a little disconcerting given her past. She said she viewed herself as having had her life on hold while at the orphanage. She certainly lives as if she still does, but after what happened last night, it's pretty hard to imagine that she still thinks that way. The sound of the door handle cracks through my thoughts, and I turn to face it. Sure enough, Hanako comes through and shuts the door behind her. She has what seems to be two microwaved instant meals in her hand, so this is a little difficult. Good morning, Hanako. M morning she gives a little bow before making her way to her desk, setting down both plates. I can now see them to be small satay dishes, their contents steaming with a fork stuck inside the rice of each. I give thanks to her for bringing them in, and we each take one and get down to eating. She sits on her desk chair while I sit on the side of the bed. I don't like talking while eating, so the silence between us isn't annoying in and from of self. It's the fact that it only exists because we don't quite know what to say to each other that's off-putting. Hanako glances towards me every so often as she eats. I only notice her doing so because I'm doing just the same thing. We're eating together as if we were a couple. We even had sex last night, a first for both of us. Something feels wrong, though. Maybe that's why we can't say even a single word to each other as we finish our plates and leave them in the sink. Maybe that's why we leave Hanako's room without holding hands or making small talk. Maybe that's why it feels as if we're further apart than we've ever been before. We enter the classroom together, neither of us so much as glancing at each other. Just after we do so, I realize that this may have been a mistake. Shizune lifts her eyebrow at the sight, her suspicion raised. We reach the center aisle between the classroom desks and look to each other. I'm not quite sure what I should say. Does she want me to address her as a girlfriend? I didn't think our relationship was... Oh, that's why this feels so strange. S see you. Okay. I awkwardly hold up a hand as we part and take our seats at our respective desks. I can't even look back to her out of embarrassment. I feel like the gulf between Hanako and I is because of me. Shizone begins to make her way towards me, but then Muto enters the room. I'm thankful for his arrival being so well-timed, drawing Shizune and her questioning away to wait for another time. I wouldn't have been able to answer her anyway. I like Hanako but I've never told her what my feelings for her are. Hanako said she saw me as anything beyond a... Bleh. Hanako never said she saw me as anything beyond a friend either, yet despite that we slept together. The bell to signal the beginning of lunch rings out. 
Muto was taken a little off guard, his chemistry lecture being cut off mid-sentence, much to his chagrin. For the eternity, entirety of the class, his ramblings has passed through one ear and out the other as my mind mulls over the question of Hanako. I can't get her out of my mind, and now I've managed to wind myself up about it. I realize that she never said yes to what we did. She didn't say no either, but would she even be able to? She's extremely submissive at the best of times, and no doubt it took her a gargantuan effort to show her scarring. I decided to try and at least make conversation with her. That would be better than the monosyllabic conversation that's been the most we've managed between each other so far today. I walk to her desk intending to chat, but she awkwardly blushes and looks down even before I've come up to her. I take a breath to speak, but find myself lost for words. What in the world should I say to her? Hearing approaching footsteps, I turn to sh see Shizune and Misha already making their way towards us, no doubt with the intent to start asking troublesome things. A couple of other classmates are looking at us and gossiping between them as they throw sideways glances. They must have also noticed Hanako and I coming in together earlier. <sighs> I open my mouth to reassure Hanako, but she preempts me. I... I... I've gotta go do something. I've gotta go do something, part two. She gets out of her chair and dashes for the door. A couple of books and pens that were on her desk are sent falling to the floor in her rush. Not many people seem to care about this event. A few look around to see what all the fuss is about, but go back to what they were previously doing soon after. I'm left despairingly looking at the door that Hanako disappeared out of. The idea of running after her passes through my mind, but I'm fairly sure that Hanako can run faster than I can. And besides, what would I say to her once I caught up anyway? Eventually, I simply crouch down and begin picking up the items that had fallen to the ground from her desk. I feel low in every way, reduced to this as students pass by me on their way out of the room. I feel a tap on my shoulder. I look up to see Shizune and Misha looking at me. Curiosity about the situation written on their faces, mixed with a slightly apologetic look at the idea that they were partially responsible for what just happened. Hey, Chan, if we can help at all. I just shake my head. This isn't a matter for them. And from Shizune's expression and the tone of Misha's voice, I think they know the same thing. Shizune acknowledges my response, and gives a solemn bow before making her way out of the room. Misha soon follows her out, obediently following her role as Shizune's shadow. I pick myself up, books and pins in hand, and place them inside Hanako's desk. With the classroom now empty, I end up leaning against her desk and thinking to myself in silence. It feels like there's a complete emotional disconnect between Hanako and I. We haven't known each other for long at all, and despite wanting to start going out with her, I really don't know that much about how Hanako views things. I've been studying as hard as I can for exams, but I still don't feel like I have any real sense of direction behind it. I tried to be a friend to Hanako, even if I couldn't tell her my feelings, and all we've done is drive each other apart. I couldn't even write a letter back to the one girl who ever loved me, Iwanako. What should I do? What can I do? I simply don't know the answer to either of those questions. I do know that nobody else can help me with them. Just going back to the way things were would be enough to make me happy, but I know that it can never happen. Something changed between us last night. Maybe it changed beforehand and it just came to a head then. I know that there's a wall between Hanako and I. I've been hitting that wall every time I've tried to interact with her on any level. But now I'm beginning to think that I have my own wall between us just as much as she does. She had to practically drag my past out of me, and mine was much less traumatic than hers. I want to say it's because I haven't had long to adjust since my heart attack, but I know full well that it would be just an excuse. The one time I can recall when it really felt like she was opening up to me of her own accord, when we were playing billiards in the city. I was the one who stopped her from going further. I want to know Hanako better. I want to save our friendship, if not begin a real relationship with her. My mind begins to tick as I sit against her desk, thinking to myself in an empty classroom that we've spent so much time together in. I have to talk to Hanako. I pace around the park, feelings of anxiety rolling over me. Every so often I reach into my pocket to take out my phone, but each and every time I hesitate and end up slipping it back in. If this were any normal situation, I wouldn't be cutting classes. Unfortunately, it isn't, and so I find myself in the town below the school at 2 in the afternoon. 
Ever since I met Hanako, I've been the one to initiate everything between us. The one that started the conversations, went to her whenever she, wherever she was, and suggested what we should do. Today, this once, I don't want to be the one doing that. My hand dives into my pocket once more. This time, I quickly navigate to the texting menu before I have a chance to change my mind again. Hanako, if you want to talk, I'll be at the park in town for a while. Fighting a last measure of doubt, I thumb in my message to Hanako and press the button to send it. And now, I wait. My part in this has been fulfilled. What needs to happen now is for Hanako to make the decision. It would be meaningless for me to drag her here. She needs to decide for herself whether she wants to meet me. The apple juice from the vending machine tastes awfully bitter as I swill it down. My grip on the can has caused it to dent slightly in the middle. I shouldn't be this tense, but it's probably inevitable. Hanako is dear to me. What happened in the last couple of days has put a lot of pressure on both of us. The idea of losing all the progress we've made is coming closer to one another, and losing our friendship as a whole is deeply unsettling. But even then, I still don't really know how close we are. We may have had sex, but before that, all I knew us to be was friends. Maybe we are more than that, but if so, I never realized it. Maybe that's why I feel so uneasy right now. I don't understand, Hanako, despite all the time we've been, we spent together. The minutes are ticking by, and I still have no idea whether she'll show up. Is that? I pause for a moment, almost not believing that I'm hearing the voice I'm hearing. I drop the can and stand up with a start. Hanako. We look at each other for a few seconds, before Hanako becomes too embarrassed to maintain eye contact and begins to nervously fiddle with the roughly cut lock of her hair covering the side of her face. When I went to see Hanako in a room by myself after a breakdown, I had no idea what to say. That was fine then. All either of us wanted was each other's presence. Now though, I feel like I need to talk to her directly. I want to break down this wall between us before it forces us apart for good. Hanako, I. What we did last night, how should I interpret it? Hanako stops playing with her hair and looks at me. Her head sla casts slightly downwards. She looks ashamed, which is probably a good mirror of how I would look now if I weren't so concerned. I thought you might finally go away if I was only someone you needed to protect. I thought that if I let you do that, you might see me as someone more than that. My first reaction is disbelief, but I did do it with her after all. I had plenty of opportunities where I could have stopped things, stepped back, and questioned what we were doing. In the end, though, I didn't. A horrible feeling rises in the pit of my stomach. She offered herself to me because of what she thought I wanted, and now it feels like I took advantage of her. She may have been willing, but only under false premises. I've never been able to hide my emotions from physically showing, and now is no different. Hanako looks down once more, a strange mixture of depression, regret, and sickness written on her face. Thick silence hanging there, save for the breeze blowing through the trees around us. I knew you couldn't look at me that way. Hanako's words are said in a little more than a whisper, seemingly directed just as much to herself as to me. In what way? What do you mean? All I ever was to you was a useless person. Just someone to protect. Someone like a child. I, I wanted to be more to you than that, but after so long, I got used to it. The tone of her voice is unlike any I've ever heard her use before. She sounds disgusted, not at me, but at herself. After I came out of my room, I saw that you had started drifting away. I felt like I was going to lose you. Because you wanted somebody you could have that kind of relationship with. You were more quiet in school than before, and you were getting on so well with Yuko, I thought that I might lose you. She thought I was bored of her because I wanted a romantic relationship. But we're friends, right? I, I wouldn't just abandon you like that, even if what you're saying was true. Friendship was something I thought I'd given up on. I stopped believing in others after what happened after the accident. Before the accident happened, I got on well with people and other children. I didn't have many friends, but I didn't mind, because I treasured the ones I had. Afterwards, though, I was called names by the others and teased a lot. It hurt, really deeply. The teachers tried to help, but they couldn't do much. And even many of them recoiled just at the sight of me. 
among those calling me names and teasing me were the ones I thought were my closest friends. From then on, I believed that it didn't matter if nobody else acknowledged me. All my existence ever did was make people troubled. After all, it was easier if I just didn't exist. But after meeting Lily, and then you, I tried, but I couldn't make myself think that way again. All that time, she didn't trust me. She thought, just like everyone else in her life had, that she was worthless. Someone to throw away once I got bored of being with her. That hurts. That's the kind of person I never ever wanted to be seen as, because I know better than most just how horrible it feels to be thrown away by those I, who I thought liked me. She's cracking from the memories she's bringing up. I feel useless, completely unable to console her. In a strange way though, I'm almost thankful that she's allowing me to know this. The wall between us is going away, even if it hurts so badly to bring it down. Hanako, if you just told me... Was I wrong? Of course you. She wasn't. Hanako wasn't wrong. It's difficult to force myself to admit this, but I know trying to deny it is pointless. To me and to Lily, she was someone we tried to protect. She'd become to me what I'd, pos what I'd become to my friends after my heart attack. A broken person. I liked her, possibly even loved her, but I never acted on that precisely because I thought she was so fragile. I mean, I don't look at you that way now. I got worried about you after what happened to you in class, and I thought I should try to protect you. When you locked yourself in your room, though, I got afraid. I thought you were rejecting me, and it forced me to think about a lot of different things. I wasn't rejecting you! She blurts it out with an almost scared tone to her voice, taking me off guard. She quickly becomes embarrassed by her outburst before clenching her fists and working through what she wants to say in her mind. I would never do that. Not to you. Even though I was scared, even though I tried to push you away, you still tried to get closer to me. I locked myself away because I was just a burden to you, to Lily, to everyone. And every birthday is the same. Everyone doing their best to pretend that I matter. Everyone pretending everything was alright. For that one day of the year. I didn't want to exist, but they wouldn't let me. Even after meeting Lily, everything was the same. I was a useless person as I'd always been, unable to do anything for her or myself. I didn't want to be the same way to you. Lily and I were completely wrong. From what she said, everything we did for her, it would have only made her feel worse. Even what little I thought I had to write about her was completely misjudged. After you locked yourself in your room, I decided to try to work out my past as well, and sort of my future. I didn't know how to deal with the things I'd lost by coming to Yamaku, so I was trying to sort them out myself. I thought it would help us become better friends if I did that. Silence hangs in the air. I try to keep looking at her, but I can't. I feel really low, and though I want to apologize, I don't know how I possibly could. I hear her take a deep breath and only look back to her after hearing her drop to the ground. The sound of her crying breaks my heart. I know I'm responsible for this, and I know that I can't do anything to help her. If Anako feels ashamed, then I feel all the more so. I rush to her as tears continue to roll down her cheeks, unabated, wrapping my arms around her. I don't care how I must look anymore, I just want to be close to her right now. I'm s- Blah. I'm sorry, Hassel. I've messed everything up. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm the one that should be sorry. I was meddling around behind your back and never told you anything. I can feel my grip tightening on Hanako as my vision blurs. I can't be bothered trying to hold back now. I have to force my words out as a lump begins to stick in my throat. To tell you the truth, Hanako, I was scared. For my first time since my heart attack, I was really scared. So? I lost so much when I came to Yamaku. I was depending on you more than I ever thought I was did. Even now, I still have the hole inside me. After losing my entire life, and everyone I'd known, the thought of losing you as well. But I'm just a useless... You're my friend, Hanako. You're... No, you're more than that. I love you, Hanako. I love you so much that the thought of losing you frightened me so much. Ah, uh, this is bad. I'm really letting all of this out. 
I can't bring myself to look at her face right now. I'm sorry, Miss Sal. I can't help feeling a bit happy for so long. That's what I've wanted to hear. The last of the floodgates breaks. The sounds of her crying permeating the air as her body jerks against mine. We hold each other tightly, connected more closely than ever in our shared grief and our shared happiness. I don't know how things are going to be like after this. Right now, though, I don't care. There's no other person in the world that either of... Than either of... But there's no other person in the world that either of us could possibly share these memories and emotions with. Nobody. After dropping the dirtied can into a bin next to the bench, I take a seat beside Hanako. She puts away the handkerchief I gave her to clean herself up, which hasn't helped much. Then again, I doubt I look more, much more presentable. Even now, I feel like even a bit embarrassed after letting my emotions out in public like that. It's not bad sensation, though. I think Hanako feels the same way, too. Have you calmed down it? Yes, thank you. For a while, we just sit and take our time before talking again to one another. We both need a little time to collect ourselves. The weather is nice this time of year. Yeah, it is. I close my eyes for a moment, relishing the feeling of the sun's heat and the cool breeze against my face. The weather really is nice today. Really, really nice. You know, I don't really want to go back to classes right now. Do you? She shakes her head as she finishes wiping her eyes with her cuff. The small smile she gives is nice, and it's a reminder of how earnest it can be. Smiling for other people might be a completely normal, everyday thing, but for Hanako, though, she smiles so rarely and so sincerely that each and every time she does it, I feel a sense of relief and happiness. I'm sorry for everything. It's okay. I think we both have a bit to be sorry for. I know that I'm too shy. I know you really don't want me to be. I don't think I can. You can change, Hanako. I know that because even in the time I've known you, you've already changed. To be honest, just being able to sit here and talk to you like this means that you've changed a lot since we first met. But I can't be like that for anyone else. I don't have any plans for after school ends either. Hanako's confidence begins to slide down again, but I think that now I can finally talk to her as an equal. I can do it because I know that we're just the same in so many ways. Just give yourself time, and I think you'll be able to achieve what you want. No, I'm sure that you'll be able to do it. I can see you've been trying, and I have faith in you. And you can depend on me if you feel like you need someone to support you, you know. But, but I can't ask that of you. You can, because that's exactly what I'm asking of you. I'm going through the same thing you know. It's called love. Hanako smiles before I get off the bench and dust myself off. She does the same in short measure. I'm kind of hungry. Want to grab something to eat? She nods vigorously. The way she's smiling, the way she's acting, even just the general air she gives off, I feel as if this is the first time I've seen, seen her genuinely happy. We both make our way onto the street, walking beside each other. Is yes, that? Yeah. I think I don't really understand you. I don't think I understand you either. I believe that's fine, though. There's not a single hint of despair in our voice, in our voices. Not understanding each other is only natural. The walls we set up between ourselves couldn't possibly be broken down in a single day. But that's fine. As long as we can take it day by day and try to understand one another, I think everything will be okay. As we walk down the street though, Hanako's eyes flick to my face and back to the street repeatedly. Is something on your mind? You look restless. She slows before stopping completely. When I turn to meet her, she takes a long, long deep breath, looking at my face intently. This expression, I saw it once before on her face, just once when I accidentally surprised her in her room. Uh, I think, I think I have something I need to give you. What is it? You don't need to be evasive about it. I wanted to give you this for a long, long time, but now that I need to, it's too embarrassing. Don't worry, I'll accept it, whatever it is. She gives a sweet, bashful smile before taking my shoulder in her hand. Then, please.
Please accept my first gift to you, Hassel. Hanako? Ah, so sweet. Just so sweet. I'm sorry, I can't give you guys the best emotions right now. I read this pretty emotionally the last time, but this is actually the second take on this part, because the last one messed up pretty badly. And that's the end of Hanako's path. Well, the good end. So, I'll let you guys look through the credits. <sighs> so, what, what did you guys think of Hanako's path? Did you like it? Did you think it was a bit overdone? Stupid? Any of those things? I personally consider it my favorite path. Like, I just don't... Uh, I don't know. I just like the shyness that is Hinako. She doesn't like people, and I can... I can sympathize with that. So, I don't know. Hinako is just my type of girl. It's like... Similar stuff. I don't know. I like shy girls. They're just cute. And Anako is really just too sweet. Although she did get pissed at me that once when I had to get her bad end. Also, you guys never you guys are never gonna see that bad end, because I'm not doing it. So nope. Also, since it's over, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace.